everybody. Here we are with our wild animals around the world Wednesday series. And we've traveled all over the world. So let's kind of just review our different continents. Asia, Europe, Africa, then down to Antarctica, North and South America. Last of all, Australia, Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Arctic and Southern too. Very good, thank you. And we've traveled to quite a few of these continents already. We started out in Australia, and then we went up to Asia, down to Antarctica, Europe, and Africa. Today, we're going to be visiting North America. And next week, we're going to finish up our Mammals Around the World portion in South America, in the jungles. So we'd love to see some, some jungle outfits next week. We're going to try to dress like we're living in the jungle. So today, North America, pretty cool, huh? What are, since a lot of us probably live in North America, what do you think, what are some of the animals or the mammals that live in North America? Let's just share, what are some mammals that you've seen here in Michigan? A uh, deer, muskrat, and groundhogs. We have one actually living under our garage, even a groundhog, and he eats my pumpkins on the back patio. <laughs> we did. We saw a lot of muskrats and this year. And squirrels and chipmunks. Mm -hmm. So a lot of yeah, a lot of uh, and then because we live in the temperate part of uh, of North America, that's not even counting all the cool other desert creatures. And we'd love to see who is, oops, your Indian head. Actually, you know what? We're dressed a little Indian-like today because the original people in North America were the Native Americans. So we wanted to celebrate them today. And then I have some deer hanging out on my sweater. <laughs> so there's, all, there's quite a few varieties of deer. And we'd love to know who's watching with us today. If you'd like to share your name and your age and what mammal you chose for your report, or if you're not doing a report, maybe just tell us your favorite mammal. So here we're gonna talk about the different habitats in um, North America. Again, quite a variety, all the way from the tundra, the freezing ice, down to the tropical hot rainforest so, because the equator is right down here and the North Pole's right up there. So there's a good amount of Arctic, a lot of taiga. The taiga is like the really cold forest, um, temperate forest, grasslands, and desert. And even though on the map, Michigan, it kind of shows that we're all um, the taiga forest. We actually have quite a bit of temperate forest here in Michigan. Um, lots of grasslands over in the mid middle of our country and then lots and lots of desert. We've actually never ventured out west to see the desert. We have some friends that are doing it right now, and it's really beautiful out there. Very different from um, here, where we have mostly forest area. So there's all our different um, habitats. And we are gonna do a little bit of a vote today too, on which creatures we should talk about. There were so many, it was hard for us to choose. Oh, Sarah's six years old from Maryland. Oh, nice to have you, Sarah. Glad you're able to join us. So what we're gonna do is if you have your animal notebook or like I have a blank white page notebook. Mine's actually just a sketchbook that I use. Um, but Alexis has her animal notebook. You're going to actually turn to page, let's see what number is it. Oh, page, there's a 13, yep. Yeah. So page number 13. You're going to see the word mammals here. On this side, we're going to write North American mammals. So I've got that spelled out for you. We're going to write North American. So North is N-O-R-T-H. And as you can see, there's two capital letters. The N is capital, and then the A will also be capital. American, A-M-E-R-I-C-A-N, North American. And we actually have one that we're going to share with you to start just because we actually experienced a lot of this creature a lot this year, more than we ever have. We found a lot of muskrats 
as we were doing a lot of hikes this, especially in the spring and early summer, we saw so many muskrats. It was really, really cool to see. So we're gonna start off by sharing some books about muskrats. So that'll be our first thing with our note taking. So part of what we're doing with our animal notebook is we're learning how to take notes. And this helps you in your steps in learning how to do a research report. So we're, we have the North American mammals at the top. Your first mammal that you're gonna write down is muskrat. So muskrat is spelled very much how it sound. A musk rat, M-U-S-K-R-A-T. It's called a muskrat because it's a rodent, a rat, and it has like a musky smell to it. So it's called a musk rat. So here's our cute little muskrat here. And they, they really are kind of cute. They are rodents, but they really are, they're cute. So muskrats are a large water rodent. Their fur is red, brown, or gray. They have a large back feet for swimming and they have small front feet for digging. You can kind of see, look at, there they are in the water. And that's how we saw them most. We saw them mostly swimming. Like it was hard to spot our whole body outside. Can you tell them about the time you did see the muskrat sitting right in the grass? Right, I saw the, like literally, it was right next to my foot until it was like, it literally like, Swam back into the water like super, super quick. There, she saw one eating clovers. And then what did you decide to name that muskrat? Clover. Yeah, because every time we saw it two different times and both times it was eating clover. So we named it clover. <laughs> but we saw a lot of muskrats this year. So here's a nice um, diagram of the muskrat where it shows its long tail that does not have fur. It has fur on it like m all mammals do. It has large back feet. I remember I said that's good for paddling and has small little front feet, good for digging. Muskrats live in marshes, ponds, and other habitats with lots of water plants. They spend time on land and water. Good. And they do, like I said, this, the way this one was, that's really where we, how we saw most of the muskrats, but we did see a little baby too. So tell them about their homes now. Muskrats build homes near water. They build lodges out of mud and other plants. Pretty cool, huh? So that's a little bit like a beaver building a lodge, but the muskrats lodges are a little bit smaller. Muskrats also dig burrows underneath the ground. These homes can include many rooms and tunnels. Yeah, so that's kind of cool how it's not just like one, like sometimes I always thought of like a, um, a burrow or anything it might just be one little area, but they have like different rooms just like we would in our houses. The muskrats will eat plants in the summer and they'll eat actually the other creatures in the winter because there aren't really plants for them to eat. Our little mother little muskrats give birth to two or three babies each summer. There can be up to 10 babies in each litter. And you have to look, two to three litters every summer, 10 baby, up to 10. So they could have up to 30 babies in just one summer. That's a lot of babies. Oh, these ones are pretty cute. Can you tell us about these little babies? Muskrat, muskrat babies are called kits. They grow fast. Kits can live on their own after four to six weeks. Yep. And that, it says on here, muskrats only live about one year in the wild. So like those ones that we saw this year, like little clover down the road, she might not be around next year. So look at, here's the map of North America. And look at their range. They're just, they're not really in Mexico much because it's probably too hot for them there. And they're not really up here in the Arctic area. But look at almost all of North America has muskrats. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So what did you write? What was your fact that you, that you noticed? They eat water plants. They eat the water plants, especially which ones? Do you remember? Cattails. Cattails and then the water lilies, which are so pretty, but there's usually lots of water lilies, aren't there? We need your help voting. So I'm gonna give you the different choices and then I want you to go ahead and type in what your choice is for what mammals will learn about. Here we have our cute little gray squirrel. We learned a little bit about the gray squirrel last week with Europe because they're actually native to North America and they brought them over to the Europe and then they started kind of taking over the poor little red squirrel's territory. So that's choice number one, gray squirrel. The American bison is the largest mammal in North America. That's choice number two. Oh, choice number three is the armadillo. He does not live in Michigan. <laughs> it is, he likes it a lot warmer. Oh, and the 
porcupine. Cute little creatures. I know there are so many cute creatures. That's why we couldn't decide. So that's why I wanted to do a vote. Here's the beaver, which has, it has a lot of similarities actually to the muskrat. Oh, and the sea otter. We actually got to see an otter in the wild, didn't we? Most of these creatures we've seen in the zoo, but we got to see an otter in the wild in Alaska. And the gray wolf. That's a fun one too. The caribou. We got to see um, caribou in the wild too. Never seen a mountain lion in the wild. I have. You have you? <laughs> or we have the brown bear. So we have, as you can see, there's a lot of choices. This yeah, is why we had to decide. Brown bear before. That's true. We saw the brown bear. We saw that also in Alaska. Most of these North American mammals that we've seen are actually in, was when we went to Alaska. Now the raccoon, we've seen the raccoon here in Michigan, haven't we? So that's a long list. So I'm curious to know what are everyone's votes? Which North American mammal would you like to learn about? And while they're voting, Alexis, why don't you vote? What's your vote of all these creatures? Definitely not the armadillo. Oh, he's cute. <laughs> I think he's adorable. That would actually probably be my choice because it's. A, I like the interesting, unique creatures. She likes the moose and penguins. Yeah, too. moose. Yeah, and moose are in North America too. But like I said, we had there were so many books. We kind of just had to try to narrow it down. So there's a lot of choices here. I so if anybody has the white suggestions. Sea otter. Oh, sea otters are fun. Oh, and we have some votes here: mountain lion and the brown bear. All right, sea otter is S E A for the word sea, and the second word otter. O-T-T-E-R, the sea otter. So let's hear about these adorable creatures. And they actually, the otters were always my favorite stop at the Detroit Zoo. We used to live really close to the Detroit Zoo. That was so fun. Oh, the water baby. Oh my goodness, these are so cute. Look at that little sweet baby. I'm gonna have to come up here so I can read it a little bit better. And if you want to, Alexis, if you want to stand over there so you can see the pictures, you can. So here we have our water baby. I was born in the sea and my mom helped me to her chest to keep me safe. When I was about six weeks old, my mom began to teach me how to swim and dive. She showed me how to find tasty food to eat too. And what are they eating? Clams, mm -hmm. clams. clams and oysters. Clams. <laughs> Strong swimmer. Now I'm a really good swimmer and I spend nearly all my life in the sea. I can walk on land, but not very well. Look at the bobbing up and down in the water. Aren't they cute? It's kind of like they like to relax and bob up and down in the water. Oh, he's a deep diver. Look at that. Well, deep diver. I can hold my breath. It does look like it's a little squid, doesn't it? I can hold my breath and stay under for several minutes while I hunt for food. When I'm under the water, my ears and nostrils close off so I don't get water in them. What creature does that remind you of that we learned about last week? That the closed... platypus. Well, that might too, but the, remember the hippopotamus. Oh, right. Remember they, they closed off all everything. Flips, flippers in fur. My back feet are webbed and act like flippers to help me swim. I use my long flat tail to help me steer. Brrr, it's cold in the sea. I have a thick waterproof fur coat to help keep me warm. Look how sweet he is. They really are cute creatures. Oh, the claws and teeth. They definitely need those claws and teeth, don't they? Mm -hmm. I have sharp claws on my front feet for grabbing hold of food. In my mouth, I have 32 teeth for biting prey and crushing their shells. I have long whiskers too. They're very sensitive and they help me search out food. Look how cute he is. Finding food. I dive down to the seabed Whoa. to find things to eat. He eats that? Read what he eats. Read everything he eats. I eat clams, mussels, abalones. abalones, and crabs. And I like to, and I like spiky sea urchins too. I gobble as many as 50 of them up in a day. Delicious. Can you imagine eating that pokey, spiky sea urchin? Hey, those otters like it. Lots of things I eat have a hard shell. When I'm hunting, I pick up a flat stone and I tuck it underneath my arm. Look, now he's kind of holding it on his belly. <laughs> when I come up to the surface, I lie on my back and I put the stone on my, on my chest. Then I bash my food open on the stone to crack open the shell. And then I can enjoy the tasty flesh inside. 
They are very smart, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Keeping clean. When I've eaten, I always grew my coat very carefully. Oh, look at they're both cleaning themselves. Isn't that cute? It takes a long time, but I have to keep my fur really clean so it can stay waterproof. Can you believe that some parts of my coat have up to a million hairs per square inch? That's a lot. Staying safe. A giant seaweed called a kelp grows in the sea where I live. Before I go to sleep, I wrap myself up in the kelp so I don't float out to sea. So the kelp has the roots down in the ground of, of the, underneath the water. And that's why they wrap it around so they can stay um, stationary. They won't float off and end up, wake up not knowing where they are. Can you read this page, Alexis? Sometimes I hold paws with the other sea otters too. They dive as deep as 250 feet when they're looking for food. So you think about that, 25 story building is right about 250 feet. Wow, so that is pretty cool. Your next mammal you're gonna write is the mountain lion. M-O-U-N-T-A-I-N, that's the word mountain. Next is lion, L-I-O-N. I'm happy to make my home anywhere from forests and mountains to deserts, but I do like to have lots of space to roam around. Look at that cool picture there. I am a loner and I prefer to live and hunt by myself, except when I have kittens, of course. So there's a lot of creatures like that that may prefer to be solitary, but when they're a mama, they stay with their sweet little babies. So they are big and strong. They have this long, beautiful tail for balance. Very cool. So the golden color actually helps him camouflage. Like you can see, look at these rocks and things around him. And so many, think of how many things are actually like that brownish color that helped me camouflage. And he's got the cool, like the dark around his eyes, like we learned about the cheetah last week, that also helps with the sun, to keep the sun out. My goodness, look at these paws. Look how big those paws are. Paws, Aren't paws. those big? Well, the long back legs help him run and jump. That he can race along up to 50 miles an hour. That's a lot. I'm a little surprised to hear that there's 50 miles an hour. Now the cheetah um, can go up to 70 miles an hour for short times, but yeah, I didn't realize that mountain lions, they can go 50, that's a good fact, right? Up to 50 miles an hour. So they are night hunters. Look at those glow in the dark eyes, huh? So they actually have um, very good eyes so they can see better at night. And they also have great hearing too. So their favorite foods, they are carnivores. They only eat meat. So if they're hunting at night, they'll only eat meat. They won't stop and chew on some berries. <laughs> they'll gobble up anything, any sort of little creature. So this is when they're hunting. So you've probably seen, if you have a pet cat, you've probably seen that like when they're kind of like, when they're playing with you and they kind of prowl and they kind of get down low. Well, that's their instinct. And same thing with the, um, the mountain lion. They sneak up on their prey and go as quick as they can when they attack. They're not always lucky enough though, and sometimes the prey does escape. And look at how this little white rabbit has perfect camouflage in the snow. So the mountain lions don't actually roar, but they make like chirping sounds and they do purr as well. And they actually, oh, they also make these loud screaming calls and some people kind of find that it's scary sounding. It doesn't really look like a cat. Oh, and here's the, my favorites, the babies. Oh my goodness, look at them. Aren't they adorable with their little spots? Adorbs. Oh, so Adorbs. cute. So they give birth in their den inside a cave and they do feed their babies milk like all mammals do. When they're just a few months old, they get to come out of the den to play. They're still really tiny. So the mama mountain lion and make sure she watches them very well. But look how sweet they are. Let's see if we can make sure we see them. Aren't they so cute, the little babies? We love the babies. So as you can see, here's the, these kittens are actually six months old. And look, they still have those spots on them. Why do you think the babies still have spots? So that they can camouflage just like fawns. Mm -hmm. So it's actually, I love the mountain lion does have pretty good camouflage, but those little spots give it just a little extra camouflage. And then when they're three years old, that's about when they'll um, start having babies of their own. So here they are, they're about four feet. And that's kind of, that shows you the comparison um, to a child. 
Oh, and there's Mackenzie. Say hi, Mackenzie. She's hi. here too. We're, we're just now we're moving on to our brown bear. Brown is B-R-O-W-N. And then bear, B-E-A-R. All right, I'm a brown bear. Here he is. I live in the forest of North America. I feel like he should have a deep voice, don't you? Oh, look at my sisters and I were born in a den. Look how sweet they are. I know the bear babies, they just look so sweet. Bear look babies. at this one. Bear babies. And again, the mamas bear feed them babies. milk like all the mammals do. Look at these crazy little bears. In the spring, they like to come out of their den and explore. But they always make sure mama's nearby. So there's mama. That mama has four babies. That's unusual. Have quite them. Usually they have about two. But they can have up to four. Aww. Even though the mamas, and they look so sweet and cuddly, they can be very fierce creatures. They're very strong. So don't let that appearance fool you. They can actually run 30 miles an hour. That's pretty good, isn't it? They're pretty fast. We humans can definitely not run that fast. Oh, yeah. The, the fastest, probably like 15 miles per hour. Right. Yeah, we cannot run that fast. Not nearly fast enough. So you don't want to run away from a bear. Brown bear has very thick fur to keep them warm. But they shed some of that fur in the summer so they don't get too hot. They're called brown bears, but they're actually not all the same color. Some are light brown and some are almost black. But the black bears are actually a different um, breed of bear. So they do eat lots of different foods. Uh, most of the time they eat nuts, berries, leaves, and roots. So they're generally actually herbivores, but they, um, they do eat uh, other animals too. So they are omnivores. So they have a very good sense of smell. And that sense of smell is what helps them find food. There's the mama kind of showing her babies how to find food. They can also hear well too. So in the fall, that's their big time to eat. Do you know why? Why? It's when the salmon are really available. So like people who like to go bear watching in Alaska, they like going in the fall because that's when the salmon travel up the river and that's their favorite thing to eat is the salmon. So they get so much salmon in the fall so they can um, gain a lot of weight because they hibernate in the winter. So here they are getting ready for winter. They eat lots and lots and lots so that they can be um, hibernate all winter long. So once winter settles down, there he goes. He looks very tired, doesn't he? He's ready to hibernate. And the average brown bear is about six feet long. They also do live in Northern Europe and in Asia. They actually live in more parts of the world than any other bear. What do you want to share about the um, brown bears, Alexis? They're good climbers. They do, they like, why do you think they're so good at climbing? Because of their long eight inch claws. Yep, they've got some pretty good claws, very good. So now we're on our last mammal. Little Rancher, we've got your raccoon book now. Raccoon is R-A-C-C-O-O-N, raccoon. And they are, they're definitely, they can be very destructive. They eat destructive. garbage and dog food. Yeah, and they can be very destructive, but they really are, I do think they're kind of cute creatures. I know some people don't like them. The common raccoon is a North American ma animal. Its masked face is seen in backyards and fields. It lives in woods and in cities. They're not too picky, really, about where they live, are they? They're just picky about food. Yeah, oh, these are really cute pictures. So there are actually two kinds of raccoons, the pygmy raccoon and the um, North American raccoon. The pygmy raccoon actually lives on Cozumel Island in Mexico. So it's very um, isolated in just one area. Whereas the North American raccoon lives all over the place in North America. So they can be many different sizes. Most common, they're about eight to 20 pounds. So they're about the size of like a cat um, but they can get bigger than, unless you have a really big 20 pound cat. Some people do have 20 pound cats. Our cat's only about nine pounds and our dog's about nine pounds. So ours would be on, a, on a, the small side for a raccoon. So they are native to the Americas. Um, they like to live near the trees. They also like to live near water. And I don't know if you've ever seen a video, but they, they have these cute little hands. And you can actually see them washing their hands in water. But one of their favorite things to eat is trash. They love getting through the trash. So that's a big thing. 
that you have to be careful about because they can they eat whatever they can find look at them they got into somebody's birthday cake box uh oh <laughs> so they are they can be a little destructive can't they oh and their babies are also called kits and they stay in their den there's a little baby kit there and look at these sweet ones oh they are cute aren't they they have cute little faces and they're born with the face mask. So it's interesting because some animals would develop these colors later, um, but they're born with the face masks. A raccoon's whiskers <clears throat> actually stick out when it's scared or if it's curious. So that's kind of an interesting thing. Interesting fact is they're cute little. Oh, here's some more babies. So most raccoons will only live about three to four years in the wild. Beware of your trash cans. Keep them, make sure they're closed up at night because they are nocturnal creatures. So when we go to sleep, they get up and they get into the trash. And in fact, one time we were camping oh, and I yeah, left my story. banana in the tent. I forgot to take the food out of the tent and the raccoons all night, there was like a mama raccoon and five little babies all night. They Even after I took the banana out of my tent, they kept coming back and trying to eat my banana. And then even the next night, we made sure there was no food in the tent, they kept coming back. So they can be a nuisance, but I will say they are they are pretty cute little creatures. What do you think was one of the, the more interesting facts? They love to eat trash. Let's get ready to do some drawing here. I will flip us around and we'll get some drawing. Really, all I'm asking you to do is like, I like doing the bullet points. I feel like that separates the mammals pretty well. Um, but we will do a bullet point and then you just write down um, the name of the animal, maybe make a little dash. And then you're not writing a whole sentence, you're just writing simple little facts. So here we have our cute little brown bear. He almost looks like he's smiling there, doesn't he? <laughs> he's cute. Kind of a longer snout. His little eyes are closer together and almost looks like he has a little bit of like a hump going on. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so I'm gonna start by giving to his, he's got fairly small ears for the sides of his head. So I'm gonna do two kind of smaller ears. And then I'm gonna kind of draw his head I just for me that little bump on his head like that is very like it's such a distinguishing point so i'm going to kind of make a little bump on his head um he does have a little bit of a longer snout make that a little bit down there oops i guess i we need an eraser here there we go i'll borrow this eraser yeah so i want to make him a little bit of a longer wider snout here oops here we go and he's got his He's, I'm going to draw his mouth kind of open, just like the one in the picture is. I like how his mouth is kind of open there. That's kind of funny. And then his nose. He's got a fairly large nose. We're going to color it in. And then the, the outside of his head is larger. And then his two little eyes are fairly close together here on his head. Like some animals have them a little farther apart. His are fairly close together. And then very big body. He's not the biggest mammal in North America. The North American bison is. Um, and that's actually, if you want to add that to your facts, you can add that to your facts too, that the North American um, bison is the largest mammal. But we're just going to, um, we're just going to draw a little brown bear. I'm going to give him some really big paws. Big paws. Oops, let me move that down a little bit. So he's got big paws. And remember those huge claws, and they're not retractable claws. So cats have retractable claws what that can that go, mean? that means it can go kind of go back into their paw and back out. Whereas the bear, they just always have their paws out. So I'm just gonna leave them like, he's gonna be all just kind of taking up this whole corner here. Our big brown bear. So I'm gonna label him over here. We will label him brown bear. And I think we'll go ahead and draw our mountain lion next. So there's our brown bear. Let's draw our mountain lion here. So I'm gonna get a better picture. This one kind of just shows his head. I kind of, oh, this one's actually a good one right here. Let's do this one. So you can kind of see, he's got, you know, he's got definitely larger ears. Again, he has the snout kind of go down like that as well. And then very distinguishing the dark around his nose and the dark around his eyes. But the cheetah, remember last week, the cheetah had the dark all the way down here, whereas the mountain lion just has the dark around its eyes. Yeah, and big, he also has fairly big paws too. So let's draw our mountain lion kind of coming from the side here. We're going to put our mountain lion over here. So I'm going to start, I'm going to make him a little bit shorter than the bear. 
And his ears are a little bit more pointed, not quite as pointed as like a house cat would be, but they're kind of pointed and kind of rounded. So I'm gonna kind of make a kind of, um, I should maybe a little bit more narrow though. Those more, there we go. And then he's got a round head. And then let's draw his nose kind of, his nose is almost like a little wave like that. And then almost like a diamond a little bit. So a little diamond in a wave. There, and we'll draw his mouth. There we go. And of course, let's do the, his jaw kind of goes out a little bit on the sides before it comes in. Looks very, very fierce, doesn't he? With that jawline like that. So we've got his jaw kind of going out like that. And then his eyes are a little bit farther ap apart. And again, he's got that dark rim around the eyes. So we'll give him his dark rim. And then whiskers, of course. There. He looks mad. He does. Well, you know what? Maybe he's hungry. I bet this mountain lion's hungry. For the bear draw. to eat. I'm just kidding. No. I wonder, yeah, I wonder who would win. That's a good question. What does everybody think? Would the mountain lion or Probably would the bear, bear win? You think the bear? I think it'd be a pretty good, um, it'd be a pretty good fight between the two of them. And I kind of ran out of room for his um, legs because the mountain lion does have some longer legs, but kind of ran out of room a little bit. But he's got a little bit more of a slender figure. They're not really wide animals. They're just big, strong animals. So there's our mountain lion. My mountain lion looks a little bit more of a, like a young one <laughs> than, uh, than the picture, but we'll label ours mountain lion now. So does anybody have any guesses who would win? The mountain lion or the brown bear? Definitely the brown bear. You think There's definitely? There's no chance that thing's going to win. I know, I know this one definitely looks a little bit more dainty, doesn't it? It is dainty. <laughs> dainty is kind of like feminine and like that wouldn't be really rough. All right, so let's draw. What should we draw next? Oh, what about our sea otter? Oh, you know what I should have done? As I should have left some in the space at the bottom with the sea, the sea line in the water. So instead, you know what? I'm going to make some water in the distance here. So we're going to just kind of make some water over here in the distance for our sweet little sea otter. Because I want to make our little sea otter just poking out of the water. Look how cute he is. He's so cute. So our little sea otter. We're going to give it just a little bit of a rounded... He's got a very, very round face. I'm gonna kind of put it more on this side because he's gonna be on his belly. Because they spend most of their lives actually, I'm sorry, not on their belly. They spend most of their lives on their backs with their belly up. So that's how I'm gonna draw him in the water here. It's back, down, belly up. And he's gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw his little paws here, holding his little food. Because that's how I always picture him. There's his little crab. I always kind of picture them holding their little food. We'll get their sweet little, their, they have like a, up, like a triangle nose a little bit. And two sweet little eyes. Yeah, that was a, that was a lot of fun seeing the, the otter, the sea otter in person. And it wasn't really, wasn't really too worried about us. We got pretty close. We fact, weren't in the water with it, but. In fact, I actually could feed it some clams. Yeah, I probably wouldn't mind. So there we go. And he's got his little flippers here that are kind of a little bit like the seal flippers, aren't they? He looks a little bit like a seal, but I guess so otters kind of do. So here we are. We have our sweet little sea otter. So we're going to label him sea otter. Oh, he's so cute. Put some more water around him. Oh, sweet little sea otter. Very cute. All right, now let's make room for our raccoon. We'll put our raccoon maybe over in a tree over here. Should we put it in a tree, you think? Mm -hmm. You know, we could. Let's make like a big hole. Or we'll make a tree here. And then I'm going to put like a big hole in our tree. And this is going to be our sweet little raccoon going to pop out of this little hole here. So raccoons definitely have more of that pointed um pointed ear like a cat and then they have a very pointy nose 
So very pointy. You can almost make a, the, a really wide letter V. And their nose is kind of at, right at the bottom down there. Like you don't really see their mouths from the front. And they do have like some extra fur that kind of is out here. And then the very distinguishing thing is their mask. So we kind of draw a little bit of a dark around here. I'm going to leave a little bit of a space here for their eyes, but it does, it looks just like a little Halloween mask, doesn't it? So I'm going to make it dark around here. And then I'm going to leave their eyes a little bit light so that you can kind of tell the difference. And then they have like just a little bit of a stripe even down there um, up here too. We'll give him some little fur in his ears. And then kind of put his little his little body maybe i'll have him have some little paw well he'll be holding his little paws right here it's like he's looking out the window there oh there's our sweet little raccoon so we'll label our raccoon in our tree r-a-c-c-o-o-n sweet little raccoon and actually if you want to you can make some um wood grain for your tree too so if you wake wood grain you kind of start with like a Kind of like a flame looking thing almost and then i just kind of draw on either side of that draw lines that's a fun way to make um the wood grain so there's our current raccoon our sea otter our brown bear our mountain lion now we just need our little muskrat it's gonna hang out in the water over here with our little um oh you know where is the I lost my muskrat book oh here we go so here's our sweet little muskrat. Again, fairly simple to draw. It's got these little tiny ears that it can close up while it's in the water. Um, don't forget to label all your animals too. And then it's cute little whiskers. But yeah, they're, they're fairly easy to draw. They're just very rounded. So we're gonna draw a little muskrat right here. He's got a fairly small head, large rounded body, little tiny claws here remember he's got the the smaller claws in the front and the larger feet in the back so he can paddle pretty good and then they had they have a lot of fur on them but their tail is um hairless they don't really they don't have hair it's just like a rat's tail oops i made mine a little bit too wide i'll have to erase that in a little bit and then yeah, their face, their heads are very much just like a little rounded head, little tiny nose there. Kind of like a, a little bit like a groundhog too. They just got little tiny ears here, little nose, big belly. There's our little muskrat here. So we're gonna label our muskrat now. And that was fun to see. We had the opportunity to see so many muskrats this spring and the babies are pretty cute. So there's a the little muskrat. Um, We'll draw him maybe on some, on some ground here, some uh, pieces of cattail. They like to eat the cattails and lily pads. So we'll draw them there and we'll give them a little piece of cattail to eat. There we go. And there's our North American mammals. We have our sea otter, the raccoon, the muskrat, the brown bear, and the mountain lion. Let's see Alexis is over here. Oh, look at that mountain lion, muskrat, sea otter, raccoon, and a brown bear. Nice, very good. Well, thanks for joining us today, learning about the North American mammals. Next week, we're actually gonna do South American mammals. So dress up like you're going to a tropical rainforest. We'll try to find some tropical stuff. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye.